CBS News. As the year runs out, we thought we'd take a few moments to reflect on the local news events that have affected our lives over the past 12 months. Here's Ann Brubenstein with the first of two special year-end reports. 1982 was a year of despair. Jamie. And a year of joy and hope. Pretty silly, huh? 1982 tested the resolve of thousands of Minnesotans who were thrown out of work. And 1982 offered a fresh start for Minnesota's most famous prisoner, T. Eugene Thompson. It all began with the kind of Minnesota winter that the rest of the country thinks we have every year. There was snow and more snow, 95 inches for the season, a record. As much fell in the month of January alone as in the typical winter here. In the middle of the month, there was a 17-inch snow and then a 20-inch blizzard, all in four days. After that punishment, the rest of the year seemed mild, punctuated by an asphalt-popping 100-degree day, July 5th. The political rhetoric seemed warmer than usual. A full year of Minnesota politics began with a presidential visit. Ronald Reagan came here early in the year, and after predicting better times in 1983, turned the political stage over to local hopefuls. Minnesota is supposed to have some of the strongest political party organizations in the country, but this year, both parties saw their endorsed candidates for governor rejected by the voters. On election day, Minnesotans voted in a landslide for the once and future governor, Rudy Perpich. <laughs> DFLer Mark Dayton set a national record with his spending in the Senate race. But in this case, incumbency was more valuable than wealth. Dave Durenberger won his first full term to the Senate. There were no spending records for thousands of Minnesotans. They lost their jobs, casualties, and an ever-deepening recession. 184,000 were out of work in November, a jobless rate not equaled since the Depression. As social services were cut, hundreds lived on the streets, and others who still had jobs took to the streets. Many employers drove hard bargains because of the economic squeeze. Some asked for concessions. A walkout at the Bureau of Engraving led to some of the worst strike violence in Minnesota since the 1930s. Machinists walked out at Northwest Airlines. That ended in a month. Competitor Republic benefited. By the end of the year, Republic's financial crunch eased. Braniff was not so fortunate. It folded. So did the Minneapolis Star. It blinked out in April after 62 years of newsprint and newsmakers. A story the star never got to finish was the state's money troubles. The Minnesota legislature spent a good part of the year trying to come to grips with what the recession did to tax collections. Al Quee came to grips with it early on. The year ended with a bit of brinkmanship between lawmakers and the governor, leaving office because of the budget turmoil. In December, Al Quee threatened massive budget cuts if the legislature didn't act. It finally did, but local governments still felt the pinch. Aid cuts and declining enrollment led to closed schools and out-of-work teachers. And the prospects for the coming first few months of 1983 don't bode well for immediate improvement. I'm Ann Rubenstein, WCCO Television News. We will conclude our...